If you've been to my channel or website before, you'll know I mostly stick to the iPad. My main creative tools of choice are Procreate and Affinity Designer, and I love teaching digital lettering and design with them. But when I heard Affinity was coming out with Affinity Studio, the brand new all-in-one app combining designer, photo, and publisher, I had to make an exception. This release was just too big to ignore. What was once Serif and is now Canva have made Affinity Studio completely free forever. No subscription, no catch, and it's set to shake the design industry without a doubt. Not only does it bring everything under one roof, but it also introduces a highly requested feature, Vector Image Trace, something we've been waiting for in Affinity for years. This basically means you can now take a pixel image, like artwork you've made in Procreate, and automatically convert it into vector art so you can scale, edit, and recolor without losing quality. That's a huge leap forward for lettering artists and designers everywhere, because until now, you needed apps like Adobe Illustrator or extra third-party software to get that same result. And while the iPad version of Affinity Studio isn't quite ready yet, I've found a clever workaround that lets you use your iPad and Apple Pencil right now to draw directly inside Studio. And this isn't just a fun flex. Using the iPad or a stylus is essential to take full advantage of one of Affinity's most powerful vector editing tools. This particular tool is the number one reason I choose Affinity for vector work. I'll show you exactly what I mean later in the video. It's the perfect bridge until Affinity Studio officially lands on the iPad. And if you'd like to be notified as soon as Studio is released for iPad and get access to my upcoming training for it, join the waitlist using the link in the description below. And P.S. If you're not a Procreate groupie like me and my crew, don't worry. I'm only starting in Procreate to show you how to get your artwork from your iPad onto your computer. After that quick step, everything we'll do in Affinity Studio will be totally relevant no matter what app you use to create your artwork, even if it was made in Affinity itself. Right, all that said, let's get into it. I'm on my iPad here just briefly to show you this first step because I know a lot of you use Procreate for lettering and illustration. While Affinity Studio on the iPad will eventually make this workflow even easier, right now we'll use a combination of the iPad and desktop. If you're skipping straight to the tracing part, you won't need your iPad for this, you'll just need the artwork already saved on your desktop. For this demo, I'm using a black and white lettering piece just so we can keep it simple and focus on the basics of the image trace. Before exporting, make sure your image is actually how you want it to appear as a vector. So turn off any guidelines or any extra layers. Then when you're ready, head to your actions menu and tap share. Now you can choose most image formats here. I'm going to choose a PNG, but you could also choose a JPEG as well. PNG will just keep it a nice high crisp quality. Now from here, you can save it to your iPad drive or Dropbox, or if you're on a Mac, you can simply airdrop your file to your computer. So I'm going to do that now. Okay, and here it is in my downloads folder. I've already got a folder saved in Dropbox where I'm going to keep my project files, so I'll just drag it straight into there. If you haven't downloaded Affinity Studio yet, go to affinity.studio and click Get Affinity from the top menu. It's completely free. Just set up your profile, install, and you're ready to go. So once it's open, go up to File in the top menu and choose New. You'll see a few common preset sizes here. You can switch the orientation between Portrait and Landscape using these two icons here in the top right. Just below the first group of sizes, you'll also see the same templates available in CMYK. For now, I'm going to stick with RGB and choose the A4 size template, but just pick whatever best fits your project. Next, go back to the File menu and choose Place. Navigate to the folder you saved your pixel artwork and select it to import it onto the canvas. You'll see a little arrow icon and that just shows that your image is ready to be pasted. So just tap on the screen and it will drop it in. With your top arrow tool active, you can now position it so it's centered and reduce the size if needed to fit the page. Just grab one of the bounding box corners and it will scale proportionally to fit the page nicely. Now check the top toolbar and you'll see you've got four modes available, vector, 
Pixel, Layout, and Canva AI. We'll be working in vector mode, so make sure that one is active. Next, select your image and you should see a thin blue line appear around it. From there, head to the vector menu and we're going to choose Image Trace. That opens a dialog box with two main sliders. The first one is Edge Threshold. So this controls how sensitive the trace is to the edges in your image. A lower value is going to pick up the most defined areas and it's going to work well for clean and bold artwork. A higher value makes the image more complex and detects softer or finer details. The second slider here is Curve Fitting Tolerance and this determines how closely the traced paths follow your original image. A low setting is going to give smoother curves and fewer points, while a higher setting is going to add sharper corners. I'm going to keep mine fairly low, but I don't want to over smooth out these shapes because I want those letters to be really defined. So somewhere towards the lower end feels like the sweet spot for this particular image. Before you apply the image trace, you can also use a handy before and after preview, these three icons at the bottom of the panel. First one shows what we're looking at now, just the vector only, and the second image image gives a split view with a draggable divider line that you can compare specific areas. The third icon shows images side by side without the moving slider. So once you're happy with how it looks, just tap apply and commit your vector. How easy was that? Before this, you needed Adobe Illustrator or a middle step like Adobe Capture or Linearity Curve to get the same result. And now you can do it directly inside Affinity Studio, which is a massive time saver for anyone working between Procreate and Affinity. Now it's time for the tidy up. Using Image Trace in any app will usually require a bit of tweaking. It depends on the project, of course, but especially with lettering or illustration work, you'll want to define the shape and clean a few things up. Right now, I can see groups of letters and sections made up by multiple pieces. There's also some white shapes that really should be transparent gaps. So ideally, what we want to do is merge everything into a single clean vector shape. Let's start by adding a background so we can spot any white areas we don't want. In the Layers panel, tap the little icon with the checkered squares down the bottom here to add a new layer, and then click the Square Shape tool here in the toolbar. Pick any color, it doesn't really matter for now. Just drag out the square behind your vector artwork, and you'll notice we still have the white background from the image. Double click inside the vector shape to go into Edit Mode, and then with that white background selected, press Delete on your keyboard to remove it. Now with your colored background in place, we can clearly see those leftover white white shapes. And rather than deleting them, which would just leave a solid black area, we want to subtract them from the main shape to create proper cutouts. To do this, double click near the white shape, but select the main vector. Then holding down shift, click the white shape itself so both are selected. In the top right of the menu, you'll see some shape icons. Click on the second one from the left, which is the subtract tool. That punches a hole through the main shape, which is exactly what we want. Continue around your design and subtract each white section from the main shape. You may need to double click each time to activate the right part of the vector and remember to hold shift when you click the white shape so you have both shapes selected. Once that's done, there's one final step we want to do. We want to merge all those separate pieces into one single shape. This is going to make editing and recoloring much easier later, especially for the next stage of refining. Double click to get into edit mode and then we want to hold shift and just select all the different components. Now from that same icon group, this time we're going to click the first icon, which is the add button. That merges everything into one unified vector shape, which is exactly what we need for the next step. So you could go in now with the node tool and then you can take these little points and then adjust the curve. But there is a tool that's unique to Affinity that makes the refining process so much more intuitive. If I select the pencil tool and then I go up into the menu, there's this little icon here and it's called sculpt mode. With sculpt mode turned on, I can now draw over the existing path and instead of creating a new shape, it actually edits the path underneath. So it's like sculpting the vector in real time. Now, this isn't so easy to do with a mouse, but if you're using a Wacom or another design tablet with your desktop, you can absolutely do this on your desktop just fine. But if not, this is where the iPad workaround really shines. It's so much more smoother and natural to do with a stylus. So if you own both an iPad 
and a Mac, here's your bonus tip for unlocking that experience. Just head to your Mac settings and choose displays from the left list. And then we want to tap this little plus icon here and you should see your iPad listed. It should just automatically switch your display over to your iPad, but if it doesn't, it does have the iPad up the top in the displays section. Just tap on that and you should be able to connect it under there. It, it allows you to choose between main display, extended display or mirror. So we want main display selected. And then when you're ready to disconnect it, you can just press disconnect and it'll switch back over to your Mac. Your iPad now becomes your main display. You can still use your mouse if you want, but best of all, you can get full control with the Apple Pencil. Now I can refine my vector using my pencil tool right from my iPad. And anywhere I draw, the sculpt tool follows my strokes, letting me reshape and smooth every curve perfectly. This level of control is the number one reason Affinity is my go-to for vector work. Remember, you must have the sculpt tool active for this work on the pencil tool, otherwise you'll just start drawing extra lines and shapes. If you use the iPad a lot, you'll probably catch yourself doing a two-finger tap to undo out of habit. These gestures don't work here since you're still technically on a desktop app, but it's a small trade-off for the precision you get by using the sculpt tool with the Apple Pencil. It makes refining your vector feel fast, accurate, and surprisingly natural. So that's it. I hope this tutorial helped you see how powerful and intuitive Affinity Studio is and how much potential it has when it arrives on the iPad. And don't forget, if you'd like to be notified the moment Affinity Studio is available for iPad, as well as get first access to my iPad training for it, you can just join the waitlist using the link in the description. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.